So a conditional statement is an if then statement. Okay, so if blank, then blank, right? So if the hypothesis, then the conclusion, right? And we can think about this, and this might help you when you're memorizing these different uh, statements. Uh, I kind of abbreviated it here. So if P, then Q. You can think of the arrow as like then. So if P, that's the hypothesis, then Q, the conclusion. Now what the converse is, when I think of the word converse, I think of in reverse. Okay, so you're basically saying it backwards. You're saying if Q, then P, right? So you're actually reversing or interchanging the hypothesis and the conclusion. So it's like saying it in reverse, the converse. Now, just because the conditional is true doesn't necessarily mean that the converse will be true, okay? So that's something to pay attention to. Now, with the inverse, the inverse, you keep the hypothesis and the conclusion in their same spot, right? If P, then Q. But what you're doing, this little symbol here, is you're negating the hypothesis and conclusion. You're saying not P, then not Q, okay? So when you add that word not in there, you're making it the, the opposite. You're basically negating it. And then the contrapositive, what you do with the contrapositive is you actually interchange, okay, the hypothesis and the conclusion, and you're negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion. So this reads like this, if not Q, then not P. Now the thing to remember, and this will be helpful for you, is that the conditional and the contrapositive, they have the same truth value, which basically means that if the conditional is true, the contrapositive will also be true. The conditional is false, the contrapositive statement will also be false. So they have the same truth value. Same thing with the converse and the inverse. Okay, they have the same truth value. Either they're both true or they're both false. You can't have one be true and the other one you know, be false. And then the last one here, the biconditional statements, you can see I have a double arrow here. And what that means is that uh, if P then Q is true, Q then P will also be true. So it means it's true forwards and backwards. So usually when we think of the arrow, we think it only flows in the direction of the arrow. So if P, then Q. But this is saying that if Q is true, then P will also be true. And the way we read this is we say P, if and only if, Q. So that if and only if indicates to us, sometimes abbreviated with IFF, okay, it indicates to us that it's true forwards and backwards. It's a biconditional statement. Let's get into some examples and we'll uh, talk about how to work with each of these. So if you study, then you will get a good grade. So whatever comes after the if, that's our hypothesis, so you study. Then, whatever comes after the then, that's your conclusion, you'll get a good grade. So in our diagram here, if P, then Q, that's our conditional statement, okay? So if you study, then you'll get a good grade. What would the converse be? Okay, can you figure that out? The converse is gonna be going in reverse. If you get a good grade, then you studied. But that's not necessarily true, right? You could have gotten a good grade because the teacher made the test really easy, or maybe you're just naturally great at math, or you know, one of those kinds of things. Now, what about the inverse? Well, what we do with the inverse is we add the word not in there. That's what negates, okay, both the hypothesis and the conclusion. So we're gonna say, if you do not study, then you will not get a good grade. Now notice we kept the hypothesis and the conclusion in the same order, right? All we did was we negated them. Okay, now what about the contrapositive? Now this sometimes gets a little bit tricky, but what you're gonna be doing, it's a combination of the converse and the inverse. So you're gonna be switching the hypothesis and the conclusion, and you're gonna be negating them. So if we read this, it's gonna be, if you do not get a good grade, then you did not study. And that's true, if the conditional, the original statement is true. Okay, so you're with me so far? Let's go on to another example. If two angles, this is a math example, so if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So what's a linear pair? Well, linear just means line, right? And pair means two. So if you have two angles and they form a line, then they're supplementary. What does supplementary mean? It means that they add up to 180, right? So if two angles form a linear pair, then they're supplementary, that's true, right? Okay, what would be the converse of this statement? If two angles are supplementary, then they form a linear pair. Is that true? Well, that's not necessarily true because you could have an angle over here, okay, and an angle over here, and you can see that they're not forming a line. They're not adjacent to each other, okay? They're not sharing a vertex and a ray. Uh, so they're not forming a line, they're not a linear pair. So 
that's an example of the converse error. So just because you say something in reverse, that doesn't mean it's true just because it's true you know, forward as a conditional statement. Okay, let's talk about the inverse. If two angles do not form a linear pair, then they are not supplementary. Okay, is that true or false? That's false, right? And the reason it's false is because just because they don't form a linear pair, like these don't form a linear pair, doesn't mean that they're not supplementary. They could still add up to 180. This could be 120 degrees and this could be 60 degrees, right? Okay, how about the contrapositive? Contrapositive, we're gonna switch the hypothesis and the conclusion and we're gonna negate them both, right? So if two angles are not supplementary, right, then they do not form a linear pair. Now that's true because if they're not supplementary, that means that they don't add up to 180 degrees, there's no way that they could be forming a straight line, okay, a linear pair. Plus, we know from what we talked about earlier, um, if the conditional is true, the contrapositive will automatically be true. They have the same truth value. Or if this is false, this is false. But since this was true, this is gonna be true, okay? Same thing, the converse and inverse, they go together, they have the same truth value. Okay, last example here. If you're enjoying these uh, uh, videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. We've got more videos like these coming, so I wanna help you to uh, boost your score in your class and uh, make math a little bit easier to understand. But let's talk about this last example. If two lines form right angles, then they are perpendicular. Okay, the two lines are perpendicular. So first of all, sometimes I like to draw a picture. So if two lines form right angles, okay, so you can see the 90 degree angles, then the lines are perpendicular. Yeah, that makes sense, that's true, right? Let's say it backwards, let's say it as a converse statement. If two lines are perpendicular, then they form right angles. That's true too, right? So what we can do is, because it's true forwards and in reverse, meaning the conditional statement and the converse statement are both true, we can write this as a biconditional statement. By meaning two, conditional meaning it's a conditional statement forward and in reverse. So how do we do that? Let me see if I can explain this. What you do, this is what you wanna do, is you wanna drop the if, okay, and you wanna replace the then with this phrase, if and only if. So two lines form right angles, if and only if, they are perpendicular. Make sense? So you're dropping the if and you're replacing the then with if and only if. And what that indicates to somebody reading that statement is that, oh, this is true forwards and it's true in reverse. So it doesn't matter if I interchange the hypothesis and conclusion, it will still be a true statement. So again, I hope you're enjoying these videos. Subscribe to the channel, check out some of my past videos, and I look forward to seeing you in some of the future ones. I'll talk to you soon.